Hi all, this is Emma from Plan Inspire Create and today I am going to be breaking down my goals into actionable steps. So all this week I've been taking you through the process of setting up my goals for the next quarter in my Just 90 planner and I have been through the process of reviewing my goals from quarter one and how I got on with them and now I'm setting up my goals from quarter two. So if you want to go back to the beginning of this week if you haven't seen those videos I'll pop a link in the description below for you. So as I said yesterday I set up my goals and I settled on three goals. And under each of those goals, I decided on one to three projects that I would complete under those to help me achieve that goal by the end of the 90 days. So my first goal was to increase my fitness gradually to reach the level of 30 minutes walking a day, physiotherapy five times a week and one fun exercise per week. And I have the project of establishing a regular exercise routine that increases over time. Then goal number two is I will increase efficiency in my business and I have three projects. Move my shop to my website, remove fear and self-doubt from my business and streamline the processes in my business. And then goal number three is devote time to support the autistic community at least once a week. And I have two projects, which is get involved with my local autism hub and create regular content for the Autosphere, which is my blog and podcast on autism. So today, what I'm going to do is complete the project section of the planner. Because if we flick back to our model of how we're going to set the 90 day goals, we have the overall vision at the top. And then we've broken that down into our 90 day goals and the projects that are going to come underneath that. And so today we're going to be doing this. We're going to be breaking the projects down into actions and habits. So let's open the project section. And it says, I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but studies have shown that taking the time to plan up front will save you significant time throughout the course of actually completing a project. At the start of each 90 days, when I do my planning, I feel pressured that it's taken me a few days to plan and that the days are passing me by. But once I have my plan in place, I am so productive throughout the rest of the 90 days that I feel the benefits in practice every time. So by following the process in this planner, you'll be able to efficiently close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. It says the pages that follow are designed to help you break down your projects until you're at a level where you can really get on and achieve. And there's some tips for writing here. So when writing your actions, they need to be a single actionable step. You might end up with a very long list, but that's okay. When it comes to the time for actually doing, it will make you so much more productive. It also really helps to have your actions written in the order you will need to achieve them. So a little tip I have is to find a scrap piece of paper and brainstorm all the things you'll need to do as part of this project. Then number them in the order you would need to carry them out in. I find it often helps to start from the end and work backwards and I then write them into my planner in order so that the list is easier for me to follow. Here's a great example of what can happen if you don't follow these steps. So imagine being given directions to drive from A to B, but the directions aren't in order and there are steps missing. Some instructions are vague, such as drive in the general direction of B. So what happens when you have plans like that is that you have to keep stopping and going back to that planning phase. You can't just keep moving through the list of actions and it takes you a lot longer to get stuff done or more likely is that you feel overwhelmed and just give up in frustration. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure that these plans are really setting us up for success. So what I have now is a series of these project plan pages. So it has the start and end dates of the projects and then There's a space to put your project description, which goal it's going to help you work towards. And then there are two sections here. So any habits. So this is something that you're going to be doing on a regular basis, whether it be weekly, daily, monthly, whatever it is, you write down the habit here and when and how often. And then single actions that are just kind of a one-off task you're going to write them in order down here with some draft deadlines for those now I found last time that writing these in pencil is a good idea because if things don't go to plan you can come back and tweak things and it just helps do it on this same list 
So I have my three goals and six projects in total. And what I'm going to do is for each of those projects, I'm going to follow that process of brainstorming a list of everything that needs to be done, getting it in order and then writing it onto these pages. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what I wrote for each of those and how I've broken them down. Okay, I'm back and the first thing I'm going to show you is actually how I did the pre-planning, if that makes sense. So like I said, it's recommended to find a scrap piece of paper and do your brain dumping on there and reorder and restructure things so that when you write it in your planner, it makes sense and it's kind of in chronological order. So that's what I did. So these are my workings out, if you will. So um, what I did originally was I just worked out the dates for the 90 days. So I would start next Monday on the 11th of April. And then what I actually did was split this into three lots of four weeks. So that is actually one week shy of 90 days. So this would be my month one, month two and month three. And then I have a week at the end just to tie up any loose ends and catch up on anything that I haven't quite managed to do. So that's how the planner is set out into your three months. And then you've got this kind of week's grace period at the end to tie up any loose ends. So I worked out my dates for months one, two and three. And so I've got the span of the 90 days running from the 11th of April to the 3rd of July. Then I went through project by project and I wrote down the dates that I would be doing these. Most of them run for the whole period, but not all of them. So this one, I actually start a week later. So my first project is the exercise program. And that's because I wanted to give it a bit of time because I wanted to give it until six weeks after my surgery date before I started increasing anything. So I'm starting that a week after everything else. And then this one was super simple. I just had the first week, what I'm going to do is just put together, plot out the graded exercise program and what I'm going to do week on week so that it gradually increases. And then for the 10 weeks after that, I'm just going to implement the plan for that week. So in terms of planning that out in here, it's really easy to break down and lay out. Now, something like my second project was a bit more in depth. So Project two is moving my shop to my website and I actually want this done by the 27th of May by that's like the last Friday in May and so that only gives me seven weeks from Monday to do this project and there's quite a lot of individual tasks in there so I started just writing these out in whatever order I could think of them. It started with they were kind of semi in order at the beginning and then I thought of extra things as I was going on and I then went through and numbered these and I always do it in pencil because inevitably I get so far through and then realise there's something else I wish I'd slotted in. So I just rubbed it out and went back in and adjusted the numbers and you'll see as well here that um, I realised that this task of retaking product photos actually had another two tasks associated with it that I hadn't written down. So I ended up with a 10, 10A and 10B just so that I didn't have to redo all my numbering. Um, but that's the process I did for that. And I did a little bit of research as I was coming up with these tasks in terms of checklists for what you might need to do when setting up a shop on your own website so that I could think, have I thought of everything here? Or does this prompt any thoughts of anything else I want to achieve? And that helped me just really make sure it was a thorough list. But obviously, if there is anything that comes up throughout the 90 days that I realise that I've missed off, then I will just add it into my project plans. So that's kind of two examples of how they were different. So I did the same for projects three, four, five, and then six is over the page. And that process took me about an hour. So not bad for completely breaking down six projects. And I thought about the dates for these. So for example, this is going to be a lot of work up front doing this by the end of May. So then what I've done is the bulk of the work on project four, which is restructuring and streamlining my work processes that will start after this finishes so that we've not got too many tasks at the beginning and not enough at the end. You want it to be quite an even spread and also take into account any vacations and things like that that are going on. So that's what I did to begin with. 
Then what I did was I went through in my actual 90 day planner. Um, if I flip back to the beginning of the project plans, I went through by project. And the first thing I did was add in the dates up here that they start and finish. And then I went ahead and added a description of the project and what goal it was going to help me work towards. And then I wrote down those habits and those actions that I'd outlined in here. So for this one, you can see that my habits, I have implemented my weekly plan, obviously on a weekly basis. And then down here is really simple for this one. Like I said, I've got plotted out my graded exercise plan and I've put they're all kind of Sunday dates. So to get done by the end of the week and then implementing each of these plans. And it might seem overkill kind of repeating and writing out this same sort of task over and over again. But you'll see how that gets used when we go on to planning the individual months and that it is actually really helpful. And it took me maybe one extra minute. So if I show the example now of number two, I have my dates in here. So you can see we've got it ending by the 27th of May. And we've got move my website and set up a shop on my website. And I have no habits for this one. And this one is purely actions. And then what I did was I went through starting from the end. I do actually have one task that runs past the 27th of May, which is just to make sure that there's any, if there's any links to my old website, that they will kind of redirect to the new one. But that can be done after the website's launched. So I just gave myself a kind of two week grace period to get that done. It's still within the 90 days. But the rest of these, I thought about how much I could feasibly get done in a week and I worked it back throughout the weeks. And I have my calendar open and I just have a look what else is going on at those times to make sure that I'm not overloading myself. So I've got anywhere from kind of one to four tasks per week, depending on how big those tasks are. And I've done my deadlines in pencil. A couple of times I did need to rewrite some things, but if I need to tweak anything as I'm going through, then it just helps me to be able to rub it out and to be able to adjust things as I'm forward planning. So that's number two. Number three, we have develop the skills to remove self-doubt and fear from my working life. And this will help me towards the goal of increasing efficiency in my business. So this is a kind of one month goal, really, because it involves taking a kind of 30 day challenge. So what's going to happen here is I have one action to complete to begin with, which is block out the time to complete coaching on a daily basis. So I'll have that done right at the beginning. And then it involves completing a daily habit Monday to Friday of completing my self coaching practice and then attending group coaching on a Monday. So that was a really easy one to break down because it is more habit-based. It just involves putting in that work on a daily basis and actually following through with the commitment. Project number four was reviewing and streamlining my business processes. I've got it started from the beginning because my habit I want to do all the way through, but the bulk of the tasks don't actually start until June. So my habit is going to be to track how I'm using my time with an app called Clockify that I've downloaded. So I'm going to be doing that daily on work days. And then there aren't many tasks to complete, but the tasks that are are quite in depth. So Sometimes that can be the difference and it looks like, oh, this isn't a very big project compared to some other ones, but you need to take into account kind of how long a task might take you. So to give the example here, my tasks are creating a kind of workflow for what I do for each type of task in my business and estimate how long it takes per task. The great thing about having already done two months of time tracking by this point is that I'll be able to see whether my estimates were accurate and I can then look at what can be streamlined and automated. How can I structure things differently to make them more efficient, adjust any workflows. So taking into account how long things do actually take or whether I'm going to do things differently. So what changes do I need to make? and actually getting those new things set up. So if I'm gonna use a different provider for something, that's the time where I would go in and make those changes. Then create a library of content that I can share. So images I use a lot and things like that. 
and then forward plan three to six months of content using these new timings because I now know realistically how long things are going to take me and what I can fit in and I can be much better at estimating that. Then for my last two projects, this one is get involved in my local autism hub and again this was pretty easy to break down into habits and actions because Last time I did Just 90, all of them were action-based, my projects. This time, I have ones that are much more habit-based. And the actions are more about setting up those habits and getting ready to implement those habits. And those are a lot easier to break down up front. But obviously, they're not necessarily easier in terms of implementing the habit. Um, but so I have under my actions apply to be part of the steering group. And then I have three actions once a month of schedule and events in my diary that I'm going to attend because they release a monthly newsletter with those events on. And then my habits are attending drop-in sessions twice a month and attending a social event once a month. So that's easy enough to break down. And then project number six is produce regular content for the Autosphere, which is my blog and podcast on autism. And again... A lot of this is kind of setting myself up for success with habits. So under actions, I've got update the Autosphere calendar, which is where we keep when we're going to publish content. And because we haven't been sticking to that regular schedule, the dates just need updating. Then schedule a half day monthly for social media planning. Schedule a day alternate months to write and I want to set up Google alerts for new research so that I get notified if kind of new articles and things come out. Then in terms of my habits, I have social media planning I'll undertake monthly. Writing for the blog will be every other month. Recording a podcast will be monthly. Promoting the blog will be monthly and promoting the podcast will be monthly. So at the start of each month, I will open this and look at my habits and I'll schedule all these things in. And that's something that I will show you when it comes to planning my months is how I translate what is on these project plan pages into my planner when I'm doing my monthly and weekly planning. So that is my six projects broken down into actions and habits. And then if we flick past the rest of these project plans, because obviously I haven't done the maximum number of projects because that's enough to be going on with. There's another exercise I want to go through with you in this video. So it says, stop, will this work? I want you to think about your average week in practice and plot it on the schedule on page 68, which is this one here. And it's got space to plot out a weekly schedule. Now this is a little bit difficult for me because every week looks different. However, what I tend to do is do a typical week and I set myself a rule where I can move the blocks around as long as I don't kind of delete them, then that's fine. So the purpose of this is to consider whether you'll actually have enough time to fit in everything you want and need to do, including time to work on your projects. First, I want you to make a list of all the things you want and need to do, include all of your current commitments. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is what I have thought of. So under work, I've split it down into categories. So admin, processing orders, dealing with shop updates, so creating new products, getting things up on my Etsy shop, etc. YouTube, Patreon, social media and coaching. And then I have another category of the autosphere, then daily routines, and I've put things like looking after my dog Maggie, self-care, meals, chores and errands, then social time, hobbies and me time, health-related activities, so whether that's exercise, attending appointments or having to stop and rest, life admin, so anything admin that's not work-related, and then working on these projects is an important category. So then it says, if there's anything you want to get rid of, strike it from the list. Also consider if you could delegate any of these tasks to other people. Right now, I want to keep it all and I can't really delegate except maybe some things under the autosphere. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. Then group like tasks together. I think I've kind of 
done that as I've been um, writing them just because that's how my brain works. And then I've said, I like to use different colored pens for this. For example, are there lots of little tasks you do in your household or on your computer that you could complete together in a single block of time? Are there things you always tend to do at a particular time of day? Start to block out chunks of time on the calendar overleaf. You can add in the times that best suit you down the left hand side. Here are a few tips. Leave space. The unexpected happens and you want time to deal with that. Also consider how much time you tend to lose per week to things such as health issues, childcare responsibilities, or any trips you may have planned. Block out chunks of time where you will focus on your projects and not be distracted by day-to-day -day activities. It helps if you can schedule blocks of two to three hours for this, so rather than kind of half an hour here and there. How many blocks you need in a week will depend on how much you're hoping to achieve. Remember to block out time for rest, socialising and fun. And you may want to colour code the tasks so you can see how much time you tend to spend on different types of activities. So, let's take these out for now while I'm working on them. Oops, let's take out these two. So I'm going to put that up there where I can see my list. And then what I will have here is my weekly plan that I'm going to plot and this is space to put a little key because I'm going to colour code so I'm going to grab some of my mild liners wow we've got all kinds of markers here let's see what might be better what I've got maybe more range in maybe got more colours in these two three so how many categories do I think I will need so let's say I'm going to use all nine Six. Oops, that's upside down. What is that? Oh yeah, that is one of those. Seven. Eight. Eight. And nine. Yep, yeah, let's use those. They're all quite different colours, are they? go for those and I'll keep them in keep them here in an order in the order I'm going to write them down in Blues are a little bit similar. I think I had that problem last time. Okay. So, I'll label these now in my different categories. So the first one obviously was work. Then the autosphere. Then I'll probably have one for like my daily routines. So like walking mag, getting myself ready, sorting my meals, stuff like that. Then I'll probably separate out chores and errands into their own one. Because they're not necessarily like a daily routine. Then any health related Hobbies, social, life admin, and then my projects. So that neatly fits in the nine categories. And then what I'm going to do is, with my trusty pencil, just in case, I'm going to start plotting out 
chunks of time on here. Now, some things it makes sense to start with first, like routines. If it's something I do every day, then I know where I'm going to put that. But I do need to put my times down the left. So for me, last time I did this 8 till 12, and that worked well for me, and then kind of sleep in between 12 and 8. So that's what I'm going to do again. So I'm going to go away and have a play with this. I'll speed up the process, but I will film it so that you can see. And then I will talk you through it. Okay, so I finished my plan, so I'm going to go ahead and just pop it back in my planner. And I'll talk you through kind of how I did it and what it's looking like. I mean, obviously the biggest colour on there is the work colour, but I think it's looking quite good how I've done it. So I started by putting my things in that I do daily. So I've left an hour in the morning for kind of getting up ready, breakfast, walk the dog. Then I've left half an hour for lunch, half an hour for walking the dog at five, an hour for dinner, and then an hour for kind of evening routine and winding down at the end of the night. So that's all my daily routines. Then what next? In terms of life admin, I've put in an hour at the weekend, an hour in the week. The autosphere, which kind of also is this time a project, so but I've kept it separate. So technically, this is kind of also project time. I've blocked out this time here because this is when the autism hub drop-ins are. So on the weeks that I go to those, that's what I'll do. And on the alternate weeks, I'll work on the autosphere. That's kind of how I reasoned it out that it would balance out that that's kind of like my autism focused work time. Um, yeah, then in terms of errands, that's in town. So I scheduled some time after that for running errands. And then I separated out just a couple of evenings between walking Maggie and dinner for doing chores. In terms of health, I've currently just put the one appointment in that I know I have every week, but I've purposely left like a good half day on a Thursday in case of any appointments, in case I have to stop and rest at any point in the week. I didn't want to completely fill it up. So I'm kind of taking that into account there and then other things could shuffle around if because obviously that's not necessarily going to happen on a Thursday. So if you had a job where, say, you had to be in the office nine to five, this would look very different and it probably wouldn't be as flexible. But for me, these a lot of these blocks can be moved around as and when, but I have thought about where makes the most sense. So for example, projects I've put on a Monday morning because one of my tasks is to attend group coaching on a Monday, uh, which is 11 till 12. And so I thought, why not? keep this whole four hour block for projects because that actually tends to be when I'm at my most focused is on a Monday morning. So why not hit the ground running with some of these projects? And then the rest of the day I've got work. 
Um, all the pinks are work, so I've tried to put them in blocks. I've put an hour on one evening because I tend to have things like live streams for my patrons and stuff like that. And then I usually do something on one weekend morning if it's packing orders or scheduling a video or something. So I've taken that into account. Hobbies, I've blocked myself out one evening for two hours and one weekend day for two hours. Then social time, I've put in two evenings, an afternoon and a kind of weekend day. And I think that's all my categories. And then as you can see, there's still lots of open slots. So we've got one, two, three, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27. So there's still 28 empty hours. So it's probably going to be that work spills over. But let's see with the time tracking, that's really going to show whether this is an accurate representation or not. Um, and then Obviously, it does leave me time, fun time, extra social time. I can be flexible with those 28 hours, but this is where I'm thinking of spending the bulk of the time. So once I've done that, it says there's an important lesson in this exercise. If you can't make it work on paper, you won't make it work in real life. So for me, I think this is quite realistic, specifically with the amount of hours I've left free and flexible. In reality, I will not have this many hours free in a week. I will probably have very few hours free in a week, but I'm not over committed myself and I'm going to try and stick to these hours first and prioritise the tasks in these hours and then consider if the other things really need to be done. And then there's just some notes here about what to do if it doesn't really work for you, about maybe scaling back some of your projects or your goals, seeing if you can get rid of other things or delegate other things and keeping flexible using this plan. So something I like to do is I have a calendar that I keep on my Google Calendar that's called My Ideal Week, and it will have these blocks in kind of color coded, and it's separate from my normal calendar, so I can toggle it on and off and look at it. It's not clogging up my usual calendar, but it will give me that overview when I'm planning my week of where I said I was gonna do these things so that I can reference it and try and keep to it as much as possible. But I keep a flexible approach, so I move things around as needed. So that is all I'm gonna cover for today's video. But tomorrow, I'm actually gonna do the last exercise in the project section, which is setting up my vision board for this 90 days, which I loved. Let me find the one from last time. I absolutely adored it. So this is my one from last time and I found it kept me really motivated and inspired throughout the 90 days. So I'm looking forward to creating a new one with you tomorrow. So if you like the video, like it and consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of these or other videos that I put out on my channel. And I will see you back here tomorrow for that next video. Bye.